The Hunterian Museum is founded on the collection of John Hunter, a surgeon and teacher of surgery and anatomy from the 18th century. And he was one of the first people to try and transform surgery from its early roots in the company of barber surgeons to make it more into the surgery recognized today based on careful anatomical and pathological science. Up until the middle of the 18th century, surgery in London was taught primarily by apprenticeship. You'd serve a seven-year apprenticeship with a surgeon. You'd pick up the nuts and bolts of what a surgeon was doing, but there was no formal tuition. You might go along to see some anatomical lectures at Barber Surgeon's Hall, but as a young surgeon, all you could do would be to go along and watch. There was no chance to actually practice dissection and no teaching of anatomy or pathology in the way we'd understand them today. So what, first of all, William Hunter did was to offer courses to young surgeons in which they would actually get to carry out a dissection, so a very hands-on way of training, and in fact still a way in which most medical students learn anatomy today, so very successful. John Hunter began his career as an assistant working for William and later went on to train as a surgeon and to give his own course of lectures. And between them, the Hunters really remade the landscape of medical education in London in the 18th century. Getting hold of bodies was one of the biggest problems for teachers of anatomy in the 18th century because there was no legal supply of bodies for the work they were doing. They weren't entitled to the bodies of criminals, and the Anatomy Act, which guaranteed a legal supply of bodies for anatomy schools, wasn't passed until 1832. So they were having to rely on private deals with hospitals, with workhouses, with prisons, but most of all with the resurrection men, the grave robbers, the body snatchers, who supplied all of the private anatomy schools in George and London with the corpses they need. And of course, this was rather difficult. It wasn't strictly illegal, but it was hardly the thing that your neighbours would look kindly upon. So people like John Hunter would have to work very carefully to make sure that what they were doing was seen as valuable by their peers and by their neighbours. Because bodies were so hard to come by, of course, most teachers also used preserved specimens or preparations in their lectures. So bits of body pickled in alcohol or dried and varnished as dry preparations, and they would pass these around in their lectures for their students to look at. So every teacher of anatomy, and there were maybe 30 or 40 of them working in London at the time, would have a small museum. And people like William and John Hunter took that one step further. They collected on a much larger scale, building up huge collections that were used for teaching, for preserving the results of their experimental researches, but also as a way of displaying their work as anatomists to a much wider public audience. What's lovely about the Hunterian collection is it demonstrates John Hunter's wide-ranging interests. So we have bits that have come from his patients, tumours removed from patients in George's Hospital, gigantic tumours that Hunter removed in operations without the benefit of anaesthesia for his patients. And you can really see where his skill as an anatomist helped him perform surgery in a way that was much safer and much quicker than his predecessors were able to do. In some cases, you can see how Hunter used his expertise and his experimental research to avoid carrying out major operations. So the coachman's leg, in which Hunter has carried out a much smaller ligation of an artery to avoid having to amputate a man's leg for a popliteal aneurysm, an aneurysm of the artery behind the knee. And then, of course, there are lots of specimens which come from his rich private patients, a bit of his local vicar, a bit of the uh, Bishop of Durham, even a bit of the Archbishop of Canterbury preserved in the museum. So one gets the sense there was no great resistance to dissection amongst Hunter's peers in the 18th century. And then, of course, there are lots and lots of specimens of different animals. It's estimated that Hunter dissected over 300 different species of animal thousands of specimens, and he was getting things sent to him from all over the world, giraffes from Africa, dissections of elephants from the Queen's Menagerie, and even whales sent back to him by horse and cart for, by his friend Edward Jenner, who was living down in Gloucestershire. You can just imagine the dismay of Hunter's neighbours when this rotting whale carcass turned up in his back garden. <laughs> 